Uh, next, next, <laughs> next, uh, next question um, from Kent. I'm a Latino guy from Brooklyn, and all my life I've been given attention and been around mad love as as of March, and all of that got stripped. I had a in, I had an eye incident at work. Nothing wrong with my eye, but the way I reacted to it still got me messed up. Been trying to bounce back to myself for eight months now and counting. My question is, how is one supposed to get back from what from that when I feel detached and over and all over the place? Anxiety, depression, lucid dreams. Um, et cetera. I go out, I go out, I go out, do what I got to do what I got to do, but I don't feel like I'm out here. Um, that's super specific, bro. And, um, I'm not exactly sure what the eye accident was and how, how that, um, if it displaced you as in losing losing your job or if it affected either your love life, whatever it could be. But regardless, um, I can only give you something that I have done when I was in my depressive states, uh, state. So that's the only best. I can only give based off what I've been through in life. So, and DG, um, you got a response as well? Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, I'll just speak mine real quick real first. Uh, for me, I got, th- I have, back in 2018, I got third degree burns on my hand. So if you can see my hand right here, you see this brown spot. My hand got burnt from here all the way to the back, my my middle finger, pointing pointing finger, and my thumb finger. So all this got burnt. And um, I was out for like 11 months. I was working at the juvenile justice department. Um, I was about to be a corporal and then to become a sergeant. Uh, I was in my last semester of college, getting my last master's degree. So that would, it would have been my fourth degree. And I was getting my master's in nonprofit management at Florida Atlantic University. Everything was really on the up and up for real, for real. I was going to transfer from being a juvenile detention officer also to go ahead and teaching um, in the school district as well. And everything was on the up and up, but fire accident happened. <laughs> And I was distraught. Like, I, I couldn't do anything. I was stuck in the hospital. First off, the pain physically was excruciating, as well as the mental the mental space that I was in in the hospital was horrible. Um, I, I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. It was my dominant hand, my right hand, my dominant hand. And I'm an artist, so I really drew. I draw, I painted with my right hand, and I couldn't do that. And that was my favorite thing to do in life. So um, I was very much so in a, in a depressive state. And for three days, four days in the hospital, I was like, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't talking to nobody, whatever it could be. But uh, one thing I learned about just life in totality, and I'm not saying that um, you, I'm not saying that you care about what pe- what people care about. But in my case, I understood that the world, the world is going to spin with or without you. So the job that I had, um, the juvenile justice department. Everything didn't stop there. The kids were still, the juveniles were still in the cells. Um, they still had to go to work the next day. They still had to run that, run, run the day, run the day-to-day operations. Uh, the school district didn't care to replace me. They found another teacher. Um, you know, uh, my, the people who were buying my art at the time, or they weren't buying art, but people who I was doing art classes for, they found another art instructor. Um, so I couldn't even really feel bad about myself about what was going on. Even though I was, I was depressed about all that, but once you understand that, in a sense, the world is still going to spin with or without you, you mentally have to get back in your head like, all right, man, let me, let me figure out how I'm going to get myself out of this mood, uh, this psychological mood productively, uh, because you don't have it the worst. Because there's somebody also that has, has it way worse than you, and they're also achieving and excelling. So when it comes to that, it's two things I would do. First off, analyze yourself. I took a lot. When I was in the hospital, I was analyzing myself, what I can do with my left hand, what can I do 
when I don't have this part of my body. Um, and then it's a bunch of trial and error. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot, a lot of time being to yourself. Um, but once you learn it and you practice it day to day, you write it on a whiteboard of what you want to do, where you're at right now, where you don't want to be at, changing that and, have, and looking at that every single day, uh, it's going to change your mentality. Uh, writing it out, writing it down, reading it out loud, um, having that positive self-talk with yourself. Now, if you feel like you're not strong enough to do that, which is okay, it's okay to uh, not feel strong at that point in time. If it's okay that is, to cry, bro. it's definitely okay to cry, bro. So if that is the situation, search out for that person that is able to help, someone that you place value on, whether it's your family member, whether it's your best friend, whether it's your partner. If you don't have those type of people, there are people out there that are willing to help. Um, you just you just have to put yourself in those positions. Now, if you're an introvert, which I know some people are, introverts don't like talking to anyone at all. Um, if you're an introvert, you have to work on yourself, uh, your mindfulness. And that takes a lot of being by yourself, analyzing yourself, and being willing to uh, practice mindfulness. There's something called ACT, Acceptance Commitment Therapy. Look that up, read some books, or actually go to a therapist who practices that, and they will help you out as well. Um, that's what I would do um, if, if, if I was in that situation. So I just, I just gave you a perspective from mine from what I went through when a part of my body after an accident wasn't working as well as I wanted it to work um, and how I got up out of it. Uh, it took me nine months. The first two months was a, a struggle. The third month, it got better. The fourth month, it got better. After the ninth month, I, I look back and seeing why I started the training of getting my hand back into movement, back to drawing again, and then now my art is even better than what it was prior to the prior to the accident. My drive was was better than uh, what it was prior to the accident. And also, you could utilize it for uh, connecting with people who've been through the same thing. So if there are other people who have similar eye accidents as yours, you can connect. You can connect a community of people who relate to you the same way, and then now you have people to talk to about when it comes to those times where you have anxiety or you feel like you uh, you are depressed or whatever it could be because someone else has a different way to solve that, uh, to solve those situations, to solve those times because they have the exact same accident as you. Um, that's what I would do. That's my advice. Uh, DG, what you got? Uh, bro, I, I definitely can go with your answer. Mm -hmm. But I, I just want to add, uh, in terms of the part about, like, bouncing back, um, bro, I don't know if you fast. I don't know if you practice meditation. Mm -hmm. But those are two things that I found have definitely helped me to grab clarity or get a better understanding of my environment, myself, and my situation. So, um, yeah, bro, I would just say be be more at peace with yourself. Spend excessive time with yourself. Focus more on your inner than any of your outer, period. Because once your inner solid, the outer don't really matter anyway. Because this, uh, this life shit is all a mind game to begin with. So I tell everybody, like, to me, the game is 90% mental. The other 10 is physical. Once the mind is in agreement with the message, it's going to make the body follow uh, with no question. So, yeah, bro, I, I would tell you uh, try fasting, uh, detaching from things of the world, and what I tell everybody, bro, you ain't going to be anything bigger than this place if you're of it. Feel me? So we never, like, a nigga ain't never going to know his stats or his highlights or his greatest moments. If every moment he gets some availability, he on ESPN focus on another nigga's stats, their highlights, and their greatest moments. So I, I would just do most soul searching and sit with myself and try to develop the answers from a from an inner place. Yeah, that's, that's very much so key. Inner is definitely ideal. Uh, so I agree. Alright. You know everything about sports, you know everything about what, what weed is popping, what's designer, what's this and that, but you don't know shit about yourself. So a lot of you guys are just well-dressed vessels.